The group velocity of a wave is the velocity with which the overall shape of the wave's amplitudes, known as the modulation or envelope of the wave, propagates through space. For example, if a stone is thrown into the middle of a very still pond, a circular pattern of waves with a quiescent center appears in the water. The expanding ring of waves is the wave group, within which one can discern individual wavelets of differing wavelengths traveling at different speeds. The longer waves travel faster than the group as a whole, but their amplitudes diminish as they approach the leading edge. The shorter waves travel more slowly, and their amplitudes diminish as they emerge from the trailing boundary of the group. Definition and Interpretation Definition The group velocity Vg is defined by the equation, where omega is the wave's angular frequency, and k is the angular wave number. The function omega, which gives omega as a function of k, is known as the dispersion relation. If omega is directly proportional to k, then the group velocity is exactly equal to the phase velocity. A wave of any shape will travel undistorted at this velocity. If omega is a linear function of k, but not directly proportional, then the group velocity and phase velocity are different. The envelope of a wave packet will travel at the group velocity, while the individual peaks and troughs within the envelope will move at the phase velocity. If omega is not a linear function of k, the envelope of a wave packet will become distorted as it travels. This distortion is directly related to group velocity, as follows. Since a wave packet contains a range of different frequencies, the group velocity omega, k is a range of different values. Therefore, the envelope does not move at a single velocity, but a range of different velocities, so the envelope gets distorted. See further discussion below. Derivation 1 Derivation of the formula for group velocity is as follows. Consider a wave packet as a function of position x and time t. Alpha, let a be its Fourier transform at time t equals zero. By the superposition principle, the wave packet at any time t is, where omega is implicitly a function of k. We assume that the wave packet alpha is almost monochromatic, so that a is sharply peaked around a central wave number k zero. Then, linearization gives, where an then, after some algebra, there are two factors in this expression. The first factor, describes a perfect monochromatic wave with wave vector, with peaks and troughs moving at the phase velocity within the envelope of the wave packet. The other factor, gives the envelope of the wave packet. This envelope function depends on position and time only through the combination. Therefore, the envelope of the wave packet travels at velocity. This explains the group velocity formula. Higher order terms in dispersion part of the previous derivation is the assumption. If the wave packet has a relatively large frequency spread, or if the dispersion has sharp variations, or if the packet travels over very long distances, this assumption is not valid, and higher order terms in the Taylor expansion become important. As a result, the envelope of the wave packet not only moves, but also distorts, in a manner that can be described by the material's group velocity dispersion. Loosely speaking, different frequency components of the wave packet travel at different speeds, with the faster components moving towards the front of the wave packet and the slower moving towards the back. Eventually, the wave packet gets stretched out. This is an important effect in the propagation of signals through optical fibers and in the design of high-power, short-pulse lasers. History The idea of a group velocity distinct from a wave's phase velocity was first proposed by W.R. Hamilton in 1839, and the first full treatment was by Rayleigh in his Theory of Sound in 1877. Other expressions for light, the refractive index n, vacuum wavelength lambda zero, and wavelength in the medium lambda, are related by with vp equals omega, k the phase velocity. The group velocity, therefore, can be calculated by any of the following formulas, in three dimensions. For waves traveling through three dimensions, such as light waves, sound waves, and matter waves, 
The formulas for phase and group velocity are generalized in a straightforward way. One dimension, three dimensions, where means the gradient of the angular frequency as a function of the wave vector, and is the unit vector in direction k. If the waves are propagating through an anisotropic medium, for example a crystal, then the phase velocity vector and group velocity vector may point in different directions. In lossy or gainful media, the group velocity is often thought of as the velocity at which energy or information is conveyed along a wave. In most cases this is accurate, and the group velocity can be thought of as the signal velocity of the waveform. However, if the wave is traveling through an absorptive or gainful medium, this does not always hold. In these cases, the group velocity may not be a well-defined quantity, or may not be a meaningful quantity. In his text Wave Propagation in Periodic Structures, Brillouin argued that in a dissipative medium the group velocity ceases to have a clear physical meaning. An example concerning the transmission of electromagnetic waves through an atomic gas is given by Loudon. Another example is mechanical waves in the solar photosphere. The waves are damped, and related to that, the energy velocity is often substantially lower than the wave's group velocity. Despite this ambiguity, a common way to extend the concept of group velocity to complex media is to consider spatially damped plane wave solutions inside the medium, which are characterized by a complex valued wave vector. Then, the imaginary part of the wave vector is arbitrarily discarded and the usual formula for group velocity is applied to the real part of wave vector, i.e., or, equivalently, in terms of the real part of complex refractive index 1 has it can be shown that this generalization of group velocity continues to be related to the apparent speed of the peak of a wave packet. The above definition is not universal, however, alternatively one may consider the time damping of standing waves, or allow group velocity to be a complex valued quantity. Different considerations yield distinct velocities, yet all definitions agree for the case of a lossless, gainless medium. The above generalization of group velocity for complex media can behave strangely, and the example of anomalous dispersion serves as a good illustration. At the edges of a region of anomalous dispersion, becomes infinite, and may easily become negative inside the band of anomalous dispersion. Superluminal group velocities since the 1980s Various experiments have verified that it is possible for the group velocity of laser light pulses sent through lossy materials, or gainful materials, to significantly exceed the speed of light in vacuum C. The peaks of wave packets were also seen to move faster than C. In all these cases, however, there is no possibility that signals could be carried faster than the speed of light in vacuum, since the high value of does not help to speed up the true motion of the sharp wave front that would occur at the start of any real signal. 